This is Live for Love TV. Live for Love TV. Yes, I am. TV Today is the 27th day of the seventh month of the 21st year in the 21st century. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Now, today we're going to be it's going to be lighthearted today on Live for Love TV. Um, what we're going to discuss is the planet in which we live. The planet that, as far as we understand, is traveling. It's, it's not only uh, rotating, it's traveling. And I'm not going to get into the flat Earth part of this. But it's just, let's just go with what we've been told for the last 700 years, that we're on a globe. Like you see in those um, geographical classes, we're on a globe. And one, part, one point is here, another point is there. So we're on this globe. We're rotating, but we're also traveling through space. Now, what's interesting about that is we know that at some point there was definitely a flat earth um, belief system. And there were people who came along, probably long before Galileo, who was who either silenced or were not, not believed. But at some point, people started to believe that, no, we're on a globe. We're on a, you know, a, a, a sort of spear, a spear of a globe. Now, the problem with that and why Galileo's um, was pushed to one side and other people as well, was because it went against the Abrahamic religions. If you read the scriptures, the Abrahamic religions had a problem. They were built on a concept of a flat earth. And it doesn't matter how they've tried to indoctrinate it later on to say, well, it's okay. It still can't make any sense. You can see parts in there where statements are made as if I can look up to the sky and I know it's up and if there's an up there must be a down but on a globe there's no up and there's no down really is there because if, the, if you're spinning if you're going round then what which way is up is it up at night time or up at daytime yeah exactly so there is no up and there's no down it just doesn't it, you know the up and down normally came from it being flat or being being able to look at something on one level and then you say, well, that's up and that's down. And it's how it's going to be. But we, we're constantly rotating. I mean, right now it's nighttime where I am. And in China, it's broad daylight. So if somebody was coming in the sky in China right now, they'd be, they could be seen quite easily in, 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 any, in any aircraft. Right now where I am, it'd be hard to see them. So that wasn't taken into account. Obviously, when scripture was written, all of the Abrahamic religions, I don't care which one it is, whether you know, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, none of that was taken into account. And so it's a struggle for anyone to accept that that could possibly be, the two can, can co, you know, coexist. You know, it, just doesn't, it, doesn't, it can't compute unless you haven't read the scriptures properly. But when you look back into things like Taoism and even Hinduism, you don't get into these type of problems because for some reason they wrote their um, papers, their writings in such a way where everything was allowed for. Destruction, rising out of destruction, destruction again, the negative and the positive being almost like equal forces in the universe that work hand in hand and not really against one another. They allowed for all of these things. And if that was the case, then the up and the down wouldn't really matter. It wouldn't matter at all because you'd have up and you'd have down and it could, it could interchange at any given time. And therefore, when you're up, you're up, and when you're down, you're down. And, and it makes a lot of sense because all of us, some points our lives are really good, and then some points they're not so good. And one thing we know, as you know, as people from now, this law of attraction, people keep saying, well, this too shall pass. Well, whether it's good, it shall pass. And if something bad's happening in your life, eventually that's going to pass as well. And even you are going to pass. And all of us, and the, you know, the 7.7 billion people on the planet right now will pass in 150 years time from now, not a single person 
I'm sure will be alive, who's alive today, will be alive then. Yet there'll be 7.5 million billion people. There may be 50 billion people. There may be 150 billion people. And they're going to be doing exactly what we're doing now, considering what was said before and how do they square the, square the circle, as they, uh, uh, so to speak. How do they understand the planet in which they're living on? We have to, we have to, we have to you know, get back to basics now. We can't live on and on and on, keep telling our children and the generations after and after and after the things that people really had no knowledge of. They really were not that far along the, you know, the line in life, the consciousness in life. And that's not disrespect to them. We're not that far along. And I'm sure in a, in a thousand years time, people are going to say, how could these people possibly have been thinking the way that they were thinking then? And that will go on continually as more enlightenment comes in. But we have to accept that the things that we've been told by our ancestors, most of us by our ancestors, and that's in, that's in all the cultures, have been told by our ancestors, was limited to our consciousness at that time. And we can't try to say, well, like people like to say, well, they were more intelligent than us 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years ago. I'm, I'm completely sure that there were people who were alive three, four, five, ten thousand 10,000 years ago who had more consciousness than people today. But that wasn't everybody. Absolutely, there must have been. There's always because we're on such a, a we have such scales of, of consciousness and intelligence that some people right now are super conscious, super intelligent, and some people now some people right now you don't even know what to call them. They're just so you, you know you would to call them dumb is disrespectful because they can speak, but they have no consciousness whatsoever. As they say, they don't know that from their elbow. You understand? So we know that 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 degree of in intellect has always been on the planet and always will be. So you're going to have people now that are going to be as intelligent as some people maybe in 150, 200 years time because they are that far advanced in their thinking. And then you're going to have people that are so backward that you would, you know, you would, you wouldn't be able to believe how backward these people could be considering what consciousness is out there. There's lots of things that we can challenge and we can test. Yeah. But we have to test them. We can't just be sitting down there and they're talking about people being dumbed down by TVs and, you know, and I don't know what to put it, even this YouTube itself. Um, and many things, many social medias, people are being dumbed down. People are coming out with all kind of, you know, weird and fanciful ideas onto weird, what's happening on the planet and, you know, what stage of life we're on and can somebody, as far, there's one thing you can be sure of. There's one thing you can be sure of, that no matter what human beings do, they can destroy themselves up to a point, but they can't destroy their their creed, their kind. That that they can't do because they're not intelligent enough. There's no one on the planet that is intelligent enough that could actually destroy all of us and destroy our habitat. There's no one on the planet that can do that. And how people say, well, how do I know that? Well, it's, it's it's obvious because the only way somebody could possibly do that, they'd have to have enough life in them to have lived so many lifetimes to know how to do that. And even if they could do that, they'd have to be willing to give up their own life to do it. And that the two things, again, don't compute. The person who'd want to destroy the world would want to do it so that they had power and, and other people didn't. The chances that they want to destroy it to destroy themselves would be very, you know, very minute. But even if they did, they couldn't do it in one lifetime. They couldn't do it in two lifetimes. They'd have to live. They'd have to be living from the days 10,000 years ago from Kemet and Egypt and still have that consciousness and still be young and fresh-minded and intellectual and still have the ability to move, you know, nice and, and cool so they could, their brain was working properly, that they could actually work out how this thing would be done. It's the only way they could do it. And since nobody has the ability to do that, to live that long in this, in this state, it's not going to happen. So there's nothing to fear from people giving you all these conscious people talking about they have nuclear powers and these powers, because they can destroy a certain amount of things. And they can destroy a certain amount of people. That's a fact. But human beings are very resilient. Just there are many, almost all the life creatures you see on the planet right now are resilient, including rats. You're not going to find anywhere that human beings habitate that rats are not there. We experiment on rats because of their ability to survive almost anything. Their ability to go into places when you think you've destroyed everywhere, a rat will still be hiding somewhere and he'll come back out 
and he'll populate, you know, that environment again and he's off again. And, and they're just like us. They're just like us. They have an intellect and an ability to keep going. Cultures always say, oh, we're not going to mate with this culture, we're not going to mate with that culture. But in, when it comes to survival, human beings will do what they have to do. And if they have to, you know, mate with a different uh, creed, a different kind of people, they will do it. That's what human beings have always done. And that's how, they, that's how they've been here and how they've been able to populate the planet. So there are things that people shouldn't be able to frighten you with if you understand where we've come from, how long we've been on this planet. And, I'm, I, I, and again, I'm not going to get into the, the little, in, you know, the little bits and pieces about, well, it's 6,000 years, 7,000 years. People can argue about that. You know, that's not interesting to me. We know that human beings have inhabited this planet for a long, 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 long time, regardless of whether they're indigenous to the planet or they came from somewhere else. Who knows? You'd have to be alive long enough to know that actually as a fact. Everything else would just be a belief. But what I'm saying today is there's nothing to fear about what is happening on the planet right now. And all the people are talking about the end of the world. What they may be talking about is the end of their thinking, the end of their particular culture. Like people, cultures have died before. Different cultures were here at different points and they disappeared. You can see the remnants of them and nobody knows where they've gone to. But we're here. And those people, when you look back and you see the bones of the people who were living there at that time, they had exactly the same as us, everything that we had. And they lived in the same kind of communal ways that we did. So we're human beings and we keep going and we may, you know, move from here to there and we may move, you know, move amongst one another and we share ideas and intellect, but we will keep going and, and we will not be able to be stopped. The only, th I can't even think of something that could actually stop human beings. The thing that would have to stop human beings would be something that would actually stop the planet. And the chances of that happening are, you know, are so minute, it's not even worth thinking about. Something that could destroy the planet so much that nothing could live on it. Not on the whole planet, not, not a single part of the planet. Nothing could survive on that planet, including human beings. How could that happen? And if it happened, it would it, it'd be happening in a blink of an eye. It wouldn't happen gradually. And if it happened in a blink of an eye, What's the point of frightening it, being a fear, fear, fearful of it? Because you wouldn't know about it anyway. You know, it'd just be like the lights went out and that's the end of it. And it was as if you never existed. So there's nothing to fear again. So as I'm saying to you, why I started off by talking about the, the, globe, the globe itself and the planet itself is to, get your, is to get us into a thinking, a consciousness to understand what actually are we doing on the planet? How is the planet operated? I mean, there's so many people that are so fearful to leave their little neighborhoods. And yet they will sit there in their little areas, places people have never lived anywhere, but the little areas that they've come from, and they'll tell you everything that's going on in the world. And all the Illuminati is and the Knights Templars and this has happened and that. It's amazing. I, I sit there and I'm, I'm always shocked when I hear people like that. And I'm thinking, you haven't even been anywhere. There's places on the planet that if you went there, you'd think you were on the moon. Just by looking at it, you've never seen those places. There's places in Ethiopia where you can see the difference in, in temperature, where, where it's literally red hot, uh, you know, lava moving in certain parts. People have never been to these places, but yet they know everything that's going on in the planet. This is, a, this is, a, this is the problem that human beings suffer from more than anything else. They can't humble themselves to the fact that they don't know something. I've always said, you know, I don't know, I've always said about people, you know, people in general, Many people in general, they like to, they don't know anything on Monday. They're sort of ignorant of the facts on Monday. They learn some facts on Tuesday. On, on Wednesday, they, 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 what do you call it? They're like, um, you know, they, they just, they just believe like they know everything by Wednesday because they learned something. Arrogant, that was the word I was looking for. By Wednesday, they're arrogant. On Monday, they're ignorant and just learn something on Tuesday. And they're like, yeah, I know this and, uh, you know, I know that and, you know, everyone's got to sit down there and listen to them while they're talking on and on and on about what they know. Well, I don't know that much. And that's why I'm, you know, relaying some of the things I do know to you is that I don't know that much. And the stuff that I thought I knew when I was in my teens and my 20s and 30s and 40s were basically nothing more than beliefs. They were not, they couldn't, they could never be accepted as knowledge. But this is what happens. People walk around, people tell them something. And when you test them on that thing, They'll, and you push them, they instantly say, well, that's what everybody believes. 
here believes. Yeah. So if everyone believes it. Now you're saying that you know it. That's not what. That's not what you. How you're going to get into consciousness and get in, become a, a fully rounded human being and a balanced person. A person can see things maybe going against them and still be able to remain calm at that point. It's hard to remain calm. It's very hard to remain calm because when you know if you're on a plane and the plane's going down, how can you remain calm? People will say, well, there's no way I can remain calm. I'm going to die. But the thing is, you were going to die before you got on that plane. You just didn't know you were going to die on that plane. And that's why you need to learn how to remain calm in all circumstances. Always remember that you are temporary in the way me and you are talking and looking at one another. We're temporary. And every time a person thinks they're not temporary, they get themselves into a problem. Some people gain so much money and you see them with, you know, you, you see them showing you their wardrobes and their, you know, their, their cribs, as they call it. They've got like five, you know, 50,000 suits. Now you tell me, how many lifetimes do you have to live to wear 50,000 suits? They've got so many shoes and sneakers, they can't live long enough. I don't care who they are. I don't care how much money they've got. They can't live long enough to wear those. But they, they, the illusion that they try to give ourselves, we give ourselves by buying more and more and more stuff. And it makes us think we're gonna live longer. It, it, it sounds silly, but that's what we, it does. You know, you see yourself with what, 20, 30, 50 cars, it kind of gives you an illusion that you're powerful and you, you've sort of got more life than, 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 than a vagrant walking around the street in Los Angeles, but you haven't. You can go before him at any given time. And all that we're left is that your family probably be fighting over every little thing you've got. You haven't really made much of a mark. If you continue living in illusion, you're not making much of a mark on this earth. The marks that we want to make are the ones that are based on consciousness and reality. What is actually happening to us? What are we doing? And what do we actually know? And if it's only one or two things out of a billion things that we know, those two things are powerful. They can get you a long way. But if, if, if everything you are about is your beliefs and you really don't know anything, then you're really weak. You're really a weak person, whether you're a male or female, whether you're black or white, you know, tall or short, it doesn't make any difference. You're weak because you're living inside beliefs. Until the day, your, your last day, if all you have is beliefs, then you have nothing to hand on to anybody else. You don't know anything. And that's what's happened to many of us. We've been given, our, we've been given other people's beliefs that's going on from century to century to century. And we don't know anything. And we're weak and we're frightened. Of course, you're going to be frightened. If you don't know anything, of course, you're going to be fearful. <laughs> you have to be fearful. If everything you have is just a belief that this is going to happen or a belief that that may not happen, then of course, you're going to be anxious and fearful for the rest of your days. So we need to start seeing what we, we know and what we don't know. And if it's even one thing that you actually know, then build on that one thing. Make that your foundation for your life. You know one thing, that's the foundation of your life. I guarantee you're going to be one of the most powerful people in your circle just because you know one thing. So we'll be talking again soon. This is Live for Love TV. Hope you've enjoyed that. It may sound like a little of a, a ramble. You may have to listen to it one or two or three more times, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Take care. See you soon.